Welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. This is a T-34-2 GFT, it's a Tier 7 Chinese tank destroyer. It's located on the, well, west spawn of Stud Yankee, and it's under the command of Blackie 3443. Now this tank destroyer looks very much like an SU-12244, but it actually shares a lot of similarity to another tank destroyer that's not in the game, and that's the SU-12254. Yes, that's the tank destroyer that was actually uh, took over, um, or actually was developed and built, but for some reason Wargaming just never put it in the game. It's the tank destroyer based on the T-54 tank. Funny that, they uh, built the uh, SU-12244, but they won't build the SU-12254. Well, let's see how he gets on with this. He's got a 122mm gun. At least I think he's got the 122. Yep, he has. 390 Alpha, penetrating 192mm of armor with standard AP and with the heat rounds, he'll go through 250mm. And that Yank Panther has just sat himself right in front of Blackie's gun. So Blackie's had to move if he's going to be shot. Now, surprisingly, this tank is normally very very inaccurate it's got a very bad accuracy indeed but he got a good shot there and he's got another one <laughs> and in fact now that uh, hopper has now been taken down so he can now shoot the uh, OPIS and the KV-2 reload time is normally 9.11 seconds but he's got it down to 8.71 obviously using vents and a good crew well, the enemy seems to be a bit reluctant to go in front of that firing position, mainly because every time they do, they keep getting hit. I'm not really surprised that they want to pull away. And our Cromwell B, well, he's actually managed to punch through in the north, and he's now making his way down the other side. And I think that's persuaded Blackie that it's time for him to actually move and take over the, uh, the north forest, or that little copse up at the top of the map, because if you control that, you can control what the enemy does in the centre. Because they can't go through the factory if somebody's in that wood. Because they'll literally get torn to shreds. Now this is a fake tank, obviously, because virtually all of the um, Chinese tank destroyers, although some of them do have design cues which you think were coming from Soviet designs, I'm afraid none of them existed. Absolutely none. In fact, um, it's only the medium tanks on the Chinese line that actually do have some actual reality and maybe a few of their heavy tanks. But none of the tank destroyers really. Which is quite terrible. Good shot into the Nashorn. Got a low roll for 358. He could have wiped him out with one round, but he's collected a nice, decent amount of hit points there and made that Nashorn now very worried for what happens in the rest of the game because if he gets a slightest hit he's going to be out of the game. Now it's actually a very good tank in terms of being very low profile, very small and of course it's got that wicked sloped front which is very similar to the SU-12244 which means that any round that comes back at it is more than likely just going to bounce off the front armour. The front armour is 17 millimetres but it's very well sloped. Oh, that comes just missed him. Went over the engine bay. 45 millimeters at the sides and the rear is not really very much, but uh, he might get a shot on this Yank Panther as he's retreating. Well, he stopped, so he fired a blind shot in, but he didn't hit anything, I'm afraid. Now, top speed for this tank destroyer is only 50 kilometers an hour, and it's actually quite slow to uh, pick up speed. It's got very slow acceleration. And also, if it's got the stock engine, it is diabolically slow, I'm afraid. So you really do need to grind the top engine, top tracks as quickly as you can. Now, they're currently three tanks down on the enemy, and they're not doing so well in the south. But uh, they could do well in the north, because they do seem to have position, and they've got the factory. So it looks like the enemy have put all their strength in the south of the map. Now, apart from the uh, bad accuracy, 
It's also a tank destroyer with a very low hit pull. He's only got 800 hit points in total. So he is vulnerable because if he, he'd only need to take three shots from an enemy with um, 390 alpha. In fact, two shots with 390 alpha. And he'd be in deep trouble with only 20 hit points left. Another thing that's bad about this tank destroyer is the cost of the ammo. It's really expensive. And the problem there, of course, is that you're not going to make much of a profit with high ammo cost. On top of that, it's got low ammo capacity. You've only got 30 rounds, so you can't afford to waste rounds. That's a good shot. High roll. Can you go for another one? Try and get the engine bay if you can. Lead in. That should be about it. Oh, he's... And he did get the kill. He worked it out correctly, exactly where he was. I think he probably put that round directly into the engine bay as he was pulling back. I say it's a bit of a pity that they've actually made up fake tanks for the, the uh, Chinese line because there's loads of real Italian tank destroyers. Unfortunately, not in the game yet because Wargaming just haven't put them in. And that A43, oh, nice shot, well timed. He accurately predicted that he was actually going to move back and uh, fired one to the left of him and he actually drove straight into the shell. Okay, he's going to go down the uh, east side of the map, try and find out where the enemy RTRs is. I had the sneaking feeling that the enemy RT have actually moved up, but he might find them. Oh, he's found one! And it's an S51. His six cents has just gone off, but it's too late because he's out the game. Yeah, that's with the high alpha 390. You can one-shot enemy RT, but... The M44 worked out where he was and 5-1 back and that looks like it was an actual hit for 170. He's also got to worry about that Wizzy 131 GF team so over a short distance away, yeah, because he's not paying attention. So he pulls back to use the bush mechanic, gets one in and got high roll for 438. The guy's pulling back now because he knows that he's in trouble. And instead, Blackie's decided to get behind that uh, shed. And that you should never leave that shed in place. There's another shed on the other side. You should always knock those down in a battle. Because if you don't knock them down, then your, your enemy might use them as cover to start capping. Well, the Wizzy 131 GFT just got wiped out by the Dickamax. And we've got a KB-2R only a short distance away. It's got shot. Nice. Low roll, 328. But the KB-2R now knows he's here. And he's probably lying up the shot right now. But it's too late because he's out the game. That means now there's only one enemy left. It's the M44 and he can get a Pascucci's. If he can get him, he's here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a Pascucci's and a fighter badge. And it wins the game. For Blackie 3443. He does his victory dance. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Here's the end of battle stats for Blackie 3443 in the T 342 GFT. He got his first ace tanker in this game. He also got a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He did get four exactly. A master gunner for getting five armor penetrating shots in a row. A fire for effect for doing more damage to the hit points of his own vehicle. And he got a couple of medals out of it. He got a, a battle hero and an epic medal. He got the Pascucci's medal for killing two enemy SPGs. Used to have to get three kills on SPGs to get one of those. And he also got a high caliber uh, battle hero medal for getting the most damage in the game. His win rate in that one was 11,650. Let's have a look at team score. Well, there you go. Top of the table with 3,894 hit points. The next highest scorer, would you believe it, was only 1,459. That's less than half the amount he managed to get. And after that, it was the KB2 on his own team. He managed to get a Spartan with 1,449. When it came to kills, he had the highest number of those with four kills. Two kills went to the Vikamax, the Tog2 and the Super Hellcat. Nobody on the enemy team managed to get above one kill. 
And when it came to base XP, he's got the top on that one as well. So he's got the top in all three columns. 1,280, he's the only one at over 1,000. 843 to the KB2 and 687 to the M12. He fired 14 rounds in that game, got 11 direct hits and 11 penetrations. Yes, if this round hits, being it's 122mm, it's likely to do some serious damage. 3,894 hit points of damage, of which 2,162 were at more than 300 metres. And that kind of um, says that uh, he did have good accuracy, even though this tank destroyer normally has very bad accuracy with this gun. He got one hit by way of splash damage as well. And yes, the M44 did actually strike him and took some hit points off him. He spotted four enemy vehicles, damaged nine of the enemy, killed four, and did 488 hit points of damage assistance. I think that may have been spotting, actually, as well. 57,870 credits for the game, 40,000 for completing a mission, 97,870 altogether. And after repair and ammunition resupply, took away a profit of 82,002 credits. He got 25 bonds out of that battle and 1,920, 9,180 for completing a mission and took away 11,100 experience points altogether. So a very good game there for Black E3443. Congratulations on your first ace tanker. You really did monster the enemy in that one. And just uh, basically, uh, you actually proved that this tank can actually work um, even at long range with that uh, 122 millimeter gun. I don't know what you did to get it to be accurate, but I sp suppose your crew might have very a very large number of skills uh, to get it on target every time. Because uh, that was really good, actually, especially that blind shot on the SU-152, uh, SU uh, where you couldn't see exactly where he was, but you fired the round in at just the right point and took him out. So well done. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.